Hey everybody, Buzz Miller from Wannabe Studios here. Today we're going to talk about one simple thing. How to get a great guitar sound in a band setting. Now, we are guitar players. We are greedy by nature. We're probably picking up the guitar because we are greedy. We sit in our bedroom and practice for endless hours. And what have we become? We have filled the immensity of that space with our one instrument because we want to sound like an entire band. So we've turned our lows way up. We've taken our mids and pulled them down a little bit to get that scoop sound. We've picked up our highs. We've taken our distortion and cranked it because we want all that extra sustain and feel. We've taken our reverb and kicked it up. We've added some echo. We've added maybe some other effects, maybe a little chorus or flanger or whatever. And these are important because when we're sitting there and we're playing in our, in our bedroom, we want to stay motivated to continue to practice, practice, practice. But it's important to have those sounds, whether in your system or in your pedals, and know that tune-up. When you go and join a band, when you go out and play live, and when you come into my studio or any studio, understand this concept. Throw those sounds away. They do not work in a recording atmosphere, and they do not work live. What are the steps to get a sound that everyone in the audience can hear your notes, understand what you're playing, and still have that thump against their chest that says, I'm at a metal show? First thing, turn your distortion down. If you are happy with your sound and it sounds like a full band, chances are it's way too much for a setting, for a recording session, or for a live gig. Turn the distortion down. We've got distortion over here, and we've got drive over here. Too often, we get the two mixed up. You listen to the old ACDC tracks that just thump you in the chest with that first chord. There's not a lot of distortion on there. It's drive. What is drive? Drive is the ability to hear those tubes almost melting in the power amp. It's the speakers pushing that air, feeling like they're almost going to rip. It's the actual thump from the rhythmic pounding of your palm mutes. That comes without distortion. You need distortion to have enough sustain and to have enough anger on the music, but not so much that you're starting to get compressed and fuzzy and you start losing the dimension when you're in the band. You need to kill your lows. If it's lower than the guitar registers produce, throw them away. You don't want those noises. You don't want to compete with a kick drum. You don't want to compete with a bass guitar. Let them have their space. Cut them if it's lower than the guitar can produce. We've got things like Axe Effects, we've got Kempers, we've got Head Rush, we've got Line 6, we've got all these companies making really amazing guitar modelers that'll take those notes and properly um, display them way below what a guitar can produce. Cut them out. Let them go. Take your mids. Boost them. This is a mid-range instrument. Boost those mids. Take your highs and roll them back. Why are we rolling the highs back? A couple of reasons. Number one, we don't play in giant arenas. We play in little dive bars. We play in clubs. We have a two-minute sound check. The guy puts a microphone somewhere in front of one of our speakers and hopes we get sound and then puts them through a, a mediocre sound system. If we're rolling all those highs in there, you're going to get feedback issues. You're going to have... People go home deaf because all they heard was this high shrieking. Pull those down and let the mids do the talking. Take your reverb out of the equation. Every time you pull reverb out of your sound, your band will get tighter. This is almost across the board in every scenario, especially when you're in a two-guitar band, which a lot of us are. Take the echo, take it out of there. Take your chorus, take your anything else you've got in the way of effects, Take them off of your sound. A couple of reasons. Number one, when you're in that club setting, you won't be able to hear the slight nuances that you can hear in your bedroom. Drive the sound, drive the notes that you're hitting, put them out there, and the people can understand what you're playing. They'll be able to hear your solo rather than hear a bunch of noise and see that your hands are going real fast. So as we do this, we are going to understand that the band makes the full sound. 
We don't need to be in the bedroom setting where the one instrument makes the full sound. If you're really happy with your sound and you're hitting those chords and they sound exactly like you want, chances are you're not going to be good in the band setting, in the recording setting. You want them to sound almost a little bit weak. You want the distortion to be a little bit light. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that. One, you can get a tune up with it, your systems, with your pedals, or you can get the sound pretty much the way you want it and then back the gain of the guitar off to about three quarters till you want a little bit more. When you want a little bit more, that's usually when you're going to sound the best in a recording atmosphere. So, if you do these things, you're going to sound a lot better with your band and your band is going to be happier with you. You're not trying to take their space. You're not fighting the cymbals for the highs. You're not fighting the bass player or the kick drum for the lows. You're in your space with your mids. The audience is going to be able to hear you. You're going to have that drive, that punch, that thing that hits them in the chest and says, I'm at a metal show. Understand these simple concepts and you're going to go a long way and your band's going to be happy with you. If you come in with that bedroom sound into my studio, I'm going to do the same thing I always do and go, oh my gosh, can you please leave, go for lunch, come back and I'll have a sound for you. So, do those things and you're going to be happy. Your band's going to be happy too. Hey, thanks for listening. Keep on rocking.